All right, it is indeed time for Cleared to Play. Take you inside the tent, get you updated on the latest injuries in the Bay, and proud to partner with UCSF Health on this segment and bring in orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Brian Feely. Hello, good doc. What are you doing? Good afternoon. It's nice to have the new time slot. Uh, well, thank you. And, uh, yeah, nice to have you along with us for the ride here. Hey, Doc, I, I imagine you watched the Warrior game last night, and he didn't miss any time, but did you see anything funky with what looked like a little bit of a whack to the side of the knee for Steph Curry in that third quarter? Yeah, you know, I think it looked like he just got banged. I don't see anything that looks all that bad. He obviously continued to play afterwards. Um, as long as there's no swelling and there's no indication that he would have to come out of today's game and certainly hopefully not have to miss any other game as the season wraps up. So hopefully it was just getting hit on the side of the knee, um, nothing significant, and he, no swelling, and then can play, you know, hopefully the rest of the season. Movement-wise, have you been able to perceive anything lingering from his previous uh, ligament injuries in the knee? I mean, he moves better than I do, so I think he looks pretty good. But, yeah, no, it looks – I think he, he looks totally fine. There's nothing that looks like he's winded. There's nothing that looks like he's deconditioned. I don't see any slow steps or anything that looks like he's trying to favor the other leg when he's jumping and landing. So my assumption is that injury's healed and he's on to the next part. Uh, Doc, we're, we're all eyes on Luca right now with a very, very big basketball game tomorrow night for the uh, the Golden State Warriors, and Luka has been largely out of the lineup of late. He's got a thigh issue, has not played since uh, since the 8th of this month. What do you think's going on there, and, uh, and, and is he on about the timeline where he would return tomorrow night? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the upcoming games for the map, they've got the Warriors on Wednesday, then two games against the Hornets in a back-to-back I'm not sure he comes back to the Warriors. If they can rest him through the Hornets, then he's looking at essentially almost a solid month off. And if you look at quad contusions and quad strains, the average time missed is about three to four weeks. So I think if he comes back against the Warriors, I mean, it's not great for us. It's great for him. Um, but it might be a little bit early, especially when you look at the next couple games coming down the line. Kyrie Irving has missed three games due to a setback because of his big toe. He's got right foot soreness officially, but the big toe, obviously, it's a big toe. It's a very important toe. What would you expect in terms of Kyrie Irving's ability to play through something like that? Oh, I feel like you're setting me up to fail on that question. <laughs> um, so it is really hard when you think about um, big toe injuries. The best comp for basketball is going to be like a turf toe injury in the NFL. And you look at those players missing easily five, six, eight weeks with these. So if he's got a mild toe sprain and he can't push off, they're going to rest him. I would be more conservative rather than less with this because you know the you really need to be able to push off, land, and cut all through the that planter plate, the area where you get a turf toe injury. So my guess is they'll be conservative, which is the right which is the right call even with Kyrie. Uh, LeBron James' foot injury has kept him out for a little while. The Lakers are not, you know, kind of out of the Warriors' sphere as of yet. Definitely could be a play-in tournament team. LeBron put on his IG story a couple of days ago, recharging. Now there are rumors, though, that he's going to be out the rest of the regular season. What do you see with that injury, and when do you think he's back to full play? I, you know, these are hard. You know, any of these, we saw this with a similar type injury with Jimmy Garoppolo. Any of these midfoot sprains um, or foot injuries, especially with these people with the bigger, longer feet, on average take about six to eight weeks to get better. And if you look at the Lakers, they're six and six when he hasn't played. They're playing just as, not, I don't want to say just as well without LeBron, but they're rallying well. And if they're trying to get into that play, that playing game and get him as, in good shape as possible, I would not bring him in unless he absolutely feels great, and more time is going to be the secret to that. Brandon Crawford, a veteran shortstop for the Giants, has been dealing with left knee discomfort. He was shut down. They're hoping to get him back. Is this going to be one of those injuries that the Giants are going to have to closely monitor all year? Yeah, probably. I think as you look at um, Brandon's career, he's been largely injury-free, but when you look at players that are over 35 years old, he's 36 years old, if he starts getting kind of recurrent knee pain, recurrent swelling, it may be something that he's going to be on and off the DL. They're going to have to limit his uh, playing time a little bit. 
but at the same time, we often see that this is how your body responds in the early spring training um, part of the season. And as you get into the games and you get better conditioning, um, these early season injuries can just start feeling better. So hopefully it goes that way. But I would be a little bit concerned about his knee going through the year, similar to Brandon Felt last year. Casey Schmidt, Casey Schmidt, Casey Schmidt. We shall see. Hey, Doc, great to have you. Thank you so much for doing it today. All right. Stay dry, guys. All right. There he goes. That's Damn. not likely.